I look fat. <laughs> This is what quarantine does to you. I don't know healthy lifestyle, but you know, enough about me. Oh, I'm so sweaty. Okay, let's actually start this video. So. So yeah, let's actually get into the story. So as you can see, like, I'm in the West Wing of my house, you know, living it up because we were told not to go back to uni by the government and also my whole course is going to be online for the whole of term two so i thought like i just sit at home after speaking to my mum and stuff it was just kind of best for me to like be at home even though i do miss uni like i really want to be there i kind of did like a pros and cons of it all in my mind and really thought you know which option is better being at uni or being at home at the minute and i just went with going with the home option but i think i want to make a video on that later and really kind of discuss how i feel about everything with uni and stuff but yeah, let's actually get into the story, which you've obviously clicked on the video for. It looks like it's two separate things, but the both of the stories go into one. So that's why it's like one video. Um, but I think I'm just gonna like start this now and stop going on. So I was just in my accommodation with my blue lights on, writing up some notes for the seminar I had the next day. And I just thought, hey, let's have a break. Let's watch some Doja Cat on YouTube. You know, it's one in the morning, you know, it's the first year, I have a good time. I was just vibing. And then I just hear an avalanche, like a full blown, avalanche in my left ear and i'm just thinking what i just hear a full-on like avalanche like i'm on the top of mount everest and then my left ear the hearing in it just goes blank and i'm just thinking what and i just get out of bed like what is going on and i get like a tissue and stuff because i felt like there's liquid in that and then i get it to like wipe it out of my ear and there's like red liquid i'm like oh my gosh it's either ketchup or blood and i don't know what to do i'm so scared so i just thought oh my god what do i do what do i do and i was so stressed so i just was like okay the most natural thing is to call 111 you know it doesn't seem that serious but i was scared and obviously was a bit worried so i just called them up it took about like 20 minutes to get through because obviously you can be quite busy and stuff and eventually I got through to someone i spoke about you know what happened how i can't hear in my left ear and i was really really scared and they just was like hey um just if you go to the hospital you can get some of this like, medication for your ear because it seems like an infection in there but we'll call you back if we need to because the woman on the phone was like i can give you this information but we have to wait for like, a doctor to like call you later and then to kind of diagnose you over the phone to see what the next steps are. So I was like, oh my God, I might have to go to hospital, I might not. And she was like, okay, we'll call you back in about an hour or two hours. So that happened and I'm just thinking, what is going on? It's one in the morning. I was just watching a YouTube video of Doja Cat and now I'm deaf. So I'm thinking, oh my gosh, this is just like not a vibe. I literally have just got out of isolation, you know, I'm kind of back on track to everything, everything. And now I can't hear anything. So I just knocked up one of my flatmates' doors and was like, hey, my hearing's gone. And she's like, are you joking? And I was like, no, I literally cannot hear out of my left ear what's going on. And I got her to video my ear because I was like really concerned and didn't know what was going on. It just looked horrendous. Like there'd been a car crash in my ear. I was thinking, this looks awful. And I would put the videos up, but I don't want to scar you. And I don't want to make you feel squeamish and stuff. So I'm just going to leave those videos off YouTube for now. But just take my word for it. It looked awful. So I just basically went to my other flatmate who has her car at uni. And I was like, hey, hun, I know it's really, really late. But could you please like take me to the hospital? And we, I might get a call and I might have to go there and pick up some stuff. Could you do that? I'll give you a fiver. Like, please. I know it's late. I already got the bus, but the bus has stopped running. So obviously the most natural option was to like go with the car. But... I told my flatmate, like, I'll pay you, la la. So then I'm just waiting for the call. I get the call back and they're like, okay, well, no one's going to look at your ear because of, like, the pandemic, which just frustrated me because I wanted someone to look and tell me, like, what the hell's going on. But they said they would give me medication to, like, kill the infection in it that they thought there was in it. I was like, okay, cool. So my flatmate takes me, la la, we get that. I wait in the hospital for ages. It's so dead. It's empty it's just like so scary so surreal i then get the uh, medication take that back and i'll try to put a picture up the pills were they were like so big 
they were like canoes. It was so difficult. So I just thought I'd take those and like move on with my life. I also didn't go to my seminar the next day because I was like waiting in a &E for ages. It was so late. I was so tired. And obviously I was really, really stressed because like my hearing is just like not here. Like I'm just, I was just really, really nervous and scared. And I just had to like sort myself out mentally. The next day, instead of going to my seminar, like I just got my mum back home. I also like organized an appointment with the GP and stuff because I just wanted to just get sorted and I was so scared. And I hadn't signed up with a doctor either. So it was so stressful because it took so long to get an appointment. And then when I finished my dose of antibiotics and stuff, I went to the doctors because we have an on-site GP. And I went there and they looked at my ear and they were like, we have never seen this before which is not what I wanted to hear at all. I was just thinking, are you joking? It felt like there was like rocks in my ear. I could kind of hear a bit better now. And obviously I knew whatever was in my ear was like killed because of the canoe medication I was given. Three people looked at my ear, they took a sample and they were like, we'll get that sample back to you and tell you how it is. But they gave me these steroid drops. So basically what the steroid drops are meant to do is when there's no infection in your ear, but there's still like, swelling this is supposed to like relax that basically so like here's a prescription go there and get it and i'm like okay cool there it is and i just left went back told my flatmates to stitch and a few days later my prescription was ready to pick up so this is where the other story comes into play so i i'm like okay I really want to go to the pharmacy like now and get it. I would really like to bike because I hadn't really been on my bike because we'd been in like isolation and stuff. And like, I just didn't want to leave my room and that. So I hadn't really gone on my bike. So I like got my room key and I went to the bike shed that my bike was in. And I just opened the bike shed up, opened the door, walked in and I looked at the place where my bike was and it wasn't there. And I was like, this isn't my bike. This is a different bike. Then I look on the floor and all I see is my broken bike lock on the floor. When I tell you I wanted to have a breakdown there and then, I was just stood there like, I got the deadly virus it's been killing me for. I then lost my hearing, took buttloads of like medication that were like bigger than my windpipe. And now <laughs> my bike has disappeared off the face of the earth. And I'm just stood there in this bike shed thinking, you need a key to get in this bike shed. What's going on? So I was like, I want to just, I just want to like withdraw my university at my status because I was thinking this is not it. So I just walked to the reception and like, with this broken bike lock in my hand, I'm sort of like an absolute clown. I was like, hi, um, what do I do? And they're like, here you go, take this and call security. Okay, take the post-it note of the security's number and walk back with my broken bike lock like it's a bloody Chanel bag walking down campus with a broken bike lock. The clownery. And then I just call the security guard. I'm just stood outside and I'm just thinking, what the heck? So the security guard comes in like 10 minutes and I'm just discussing it. I'm like, hey, my bike's been stolen. What do I do? La la. And I'm just was so confused, like how could they have got, you know, my bike, what, what's going on? And they were like, oh, even though you need a key to get in, people can go under the bike shed and then cut your lock, take your bike. And I was like, well, how can they leave the bike shed because you need a key to get in? They're like, oh, you know, well, once they're in, they can just press the exit button and walk out. What more annoyed me was the fact when I said it, it just felt like this has happened multiple times before. That's what kind of got me because I was so confused. The security guard just like already knew they were like, this is what happened. And I was thinking, what? I literally had it in the most secure place she could and it still got to like, take it. And I was like, great. So they told me to like call up the police and basically you call him the certain number up and you like report a crime that's happened to you and they like log the crime. So I called that number. The crime got logged, I emailed security and, all that, and I couldn't get my bike back because the problem was, is that I hadn't used my bike for a while, like a long period. So they weren't gonna look through the security footage because it was such a long time. If it was like a day, then yeah, but obviously it had been such a long time, they weren't gonna look through the security footage. And also they said that the security footage was blocked as well by like something, like a pod, or it wasn't in the right direction or something. I was so upset that it got taken because I just felt like, all this bad stuff was happening at uni and just like was really not in my favour. But what made it worse is the fact that I literally had took my bike to get like done up and stuff. Because in lockdown, part one, um, I was going on my bike so much because obviously you couldn't go anywhere. And I was on it and my pedal fell off while I was on it. 
So I was like, oh my gosh, I've had them on my bike for ages. Like it's so dangerous. Like I need to get it sorted. Because if I want to go to uni and bike on the roads there, I can't have my pedal falling off. Because obviously here, like I'm in the countryside, so it's like not as dangerous. But at uni, like I obviously want it to be like proper road safe. So we got it all done up and put money into it. And someone's just taking it. It's just so frustrating. And also if you're wondering about insurance and stuff, um, we couldn't get it insured or anything because you need to have proof of payment basically. I've had my bike for like so long. Like it was, I had it for like ages, like plus five years. Like I had it for a long time. So there wasn't like a proof of it. So I was, I'm just upset because, you know, fair enough like seeing my bike, but what annoys me more is like someone's just got away with that. And like, they just got away with that and they're not gonna have any punishment. Like they've just got away with that, scot free and nothing bad's gonna happen to them. I feel so duped. And like I locked it up and used a bike lock because I thought my bike lock was all right but apparently like a d-lock is like a really good one you need to have like a thoroughly super strong one but i didn't know like how common it was because i basically put the fact that my bike was stolen on all my social medias all over the place everywhere like i also printed off things from the printer just used my printing allowance and stuck it on the bike shed to be like hey please find my bike guys if you've seen anything please let me know but loads of people messaged me saying like hey like mine got taken as well like mine got stolen as well and apparently it's so common in york apparently people's bikes on campus get stolen all the time and that makes me feel so disheartened because i feel like maybe if someone had told me like you know get a different bike before my bike got stolen it would still be with me but it's gone forever and i'm so so sad and so upset Ugh. and i also looked through all of facebook marketplace i looked through all of ebay because on ebay you can look through like past sellings I looked through there and like, I couldn't find it. But my flatmate took me to the pharmacy in her car. I'm so thankful for that because I was just not in the mood. I was like, just get me this medication. And so I um, went to the pharmacy, got the medication and they were just like steroid drops, like I said. And they like softened the wax in my ear and they also reduced the like inflammation and stuff. And that was great. And I was just so done with uni. I hadn't cried at uni at all. Like I still hadn't in the whole term, which I was really surprised by. But I was just like, you know, when you just, at, you know, you just like, I just, I'm so over it. And I just really wanted to go home, get all my clothes out wash, you know. Didn't want to like spend money in circuit laundry. Didn't want to give them any money. Like I was just so done because I've got no bike and no hearing. And these drops as well, but they were so frustrating because it's like just fluid going around in your ears. Like the drops were just so, oh, they just made me feel so annoyed. And they're just like really frustrating because liquid would just strip out of my ears. And um, my flatmates would see my ears and they looked like disgusting and they just looked awful and looked like I was dirty. But obviously I can't touch my ears or anything. I have to just leave them with like liquid and stuff and everything to like marinate. I, that's not, that's actually the worst word, but do you know what I mean? I have to like stay in there and stuff and set. So I felt really self-conscious, really down. I just like wasn't really vibing. I just felt so crappy. Got back home and then went to like the actual GP um, I have at home and they were really good. They were just like, yeah, do this, this and this and it should be like, okay, like the things have gone down now. The other um, GP in York took a sample of my ear and I never got it back. So I'm just gonna take that as it's fine because they were like, yeah, we'll give this back to you in a week. I never got the results back. So that was a bit shady. Um, but then I went private lead to spec savers and got an ear wax extraction because i was just thinking i feel like this whole avalanche thing like the hearing loss was caused by like loads of wax in my ear because i used to use q-tips a lot and stuff so i went to spec savers and got my ear wax extracted so like this hopefully never happens again and yeah like now i feel so much more confident and i feel so much like less stressed and stuff and i'm not scared it's gonna happen again like touch what it doesn't um, I will put the pictures up of my wax that was taken out of my ear, but I don't want to do that because it's probably going to make you feel really uncomfortable. Um, but just know, like, there's so much stuff was in there. I can't believe that. It's crazy. But yeah, like, I'm just never going to put anything in my ears, like, ever. Um, I've been using, like, ear oil if my ears feel dry to, like, hydrate them. And I just feel so much more confident now, like, to go back and I'm not going to feel like someone's going to look at my ear and think, ew, it was just... It was such a whirlwind, but that's how I felt. This was happening like middle of November to like December time. And like, I just wanted to go home. I was just so over it. And that's kind of the whole story really. So yeah, my hearing has gone back. So it's all good now. Everything feels great. No problems. I feel so much more confident now. Everything's great, brilliant. I'm so happy. Um, 
And I would definitely recommend like getting an earwax extraction done. Yeah, that's kind of it. Like I haven't really got anything else to add to that story. I'm just living my life in reading week, eating snacks, walking my dog. So listening guys, thank you for like taking the time out of your day to like listen to this boring video, but I do want to keep doing YouTube. I want to keep it like a consistent thing. I just, you know, when you just have been feeling down and you just don't want to like do anything. I've just been feeling a lot of that a lot at the minute and I've just been trying to focus on like my studies and stuff and I just really want to like do well at uni. I hope you like enjoyed the story and also with my bike, don't mourn for me, it's fine. I just bought a new TV to fill the void and I feel so much better that I've got like a TV to watch Netflix on and I've got my sister's bike that I've been going on and I keep breaking it because I'm so extra large but I mean yeah it's a bit traumatizing like I don't want to buy a bike ever again but I would just say to learn from this video like always call 111, use an actual good bike lock like a D-lock bike lock and just make sure like you're feeling good mentally and always like reach out to people if you're feeling down but that's kind of everything thanks for watching and because I'll see you in the next one.